On this episode of Body Bazaar, the incredible upside down man goes to the hospital for the first time. The thought of surgery scares me. Can life threatening surgery save this girl from her own face? I'm worried if she's not operated, it may eat her all up. The modern day elephant man has a medical test that could mean life or death. Ah. An athlete plagued by a medical mystery searches for answers. For so long, doctors have been sort of running around in the dark trying to diagnose, and of course, all of the diagnoses have, have proven wrong. And triplets with a brain crushing skull syndrome struggle for a normal childhood. If they didn't get the surgeries, it would cause them to have major issues or even death. Their afflictions are rare and puzzling, but with modern medicine and unwavering support, they defy the odds. These are stories of bizarre disorders and astonishing human courage. On the outskirts of Uganda's capital, Kampala, children run and play without a care in the world. But one eight-year-old girl from this village never joins in on the fun. Trini Amirwe had a normal birth and was a healthy baby. But at age four, a benign bone tumor appeared on the right side of her face. It was just a small thing, but it started growing bigger. Her mother never imagined it would reach a massive 4.4 pounds, causing horrific disfigurement to Trini's face and creating a terrible impact on her life. Trini's mother is acutely aware of how her daughter is feeling. Trini has a hope that one time, one day, that thing will go off. She thinks that if this operation is done, she'll look, she'll be fine, she'll look normal. Mm. That's what she's waiting for. Trini loves to read and dreams of getting an education. The Lord tried to catch a star. To make matters worse, Trini's been asked to leave school because her face upsets the other children. They fear her. Some people, I believe, I think maybe she has been cursed. Doctors in Uganda tried to remove the tumor, but it only made it grow bigger and more frightening. I'm worried about if she's not operated, it might eat her all up, the whole head might. Fortunately, Trini was discovered by a British charity called Facing the World that was set up to help children with disfigurements. And just when things look grim, they offer to bring Trini and her mother to London for high-tech surgery. They told me that they want to take her out, out of the country for treatment. So I was really happy. I was really excited. Graham Banton, executive director of Facing the World, has taken on the task of welcoming Trini to London. I want to win. You want to win? I originally thought, as often is the case with our patients, is that they are very shy, very downcast. So I wasn't expecting the little bundle of energy that she was when she arrived. But without surgery, this bubbly little girl is in serious danger. Wish it luck. With Trini's medical records from Uganda, the doctors in the UK are able to diagnose her. She has a condition called fibrous dysplasia. There is no known cure for the disease, and surgical treatment is often necessary. To see just how far Trini's tumor has progressed, she's taken to the hospital for a scan. Fibrous dysplasia is actually a, a, you know, a very rare tumor of bone. They're benign tumors, but they have a devastating uh, consequences as they grow. Although the tumor is not cancerous, 
its severe growth is cause for concern. As the tumor grows, there's a risk to her vision. And that's the urgency for treatment at the present time, is to try and make sure that she doesn't go blind. But going blind isn't the biggest issue. The tumor is threatening to kill her. The place where it's growing on her skull um, will impact her ability to breathe and to eat. And that's why we had to bring her over so quickly for surgery. Because as soon as she loses airway, she no longer really has a future. Trini dreams of being normal again. He stuck, he sat down and waited. But the surgery will be lengthy, and Trini needs to eat more to gain strength to survive the ordeal. And right now, eating is a big problem. Trini's condition is basically now spread into her jaw, which makes it very difficult for her to chew anything. It's very difficult for her to eat anything properly. So one of the priorities while she's been here is to try and get her to drink protein shakes in order to gain weight for her operation. Her mother is worried. Trini will need every advantage she can get heading into a very risky procedure. Tumors of this size are extremely rare. This is complex surgery in which there's a danger, obviously, of blood loss during the surgery. But it's Trini's only hope. She has to get the operation before things get worse. The operation that Trini will be having is a very risky operation. And with that, there's very real dangers that she might not survive. I was feeling like she was going to die. All Trini can do now is get a good night's sleep and pray that everything goes to plan. Still to come, everyone hopes for the best during Trini's 15-hour surgery. She's basically come in. Um, knocked us all sideways. Really hope that her surgery gives her the opportunity to go on and read a sort of rich and fulfilling life. I now have the hope that she'll have the future. But there's no telling how things will go. The problem here is related to, uh, at the surgery, significant blood loss, and that's why we want to shorten that surgical time as much as possible. But first, one young man who carries almost no weight on his bones. Because I don't store fat, it remains in the bloodstream. And another who carries the weight of the world. Caminar. So I can't walk more than 50 feet without assistance. Three-year-old Tom Staniford has been training for years to be a world-class cyclist. But Tom is far from ordinary. He suffers from a mystery condition that no one's ever been able to figure out. For so long, doctors have been sort of running around in the dark trying to diagnose, and of course, all of the diagnoses have, have proven wrong. Tom's strange illness has left his body unable to store fat under his skin. He only has 40% of an average man's muscle tissue and is partially deaf. Tom seemed like a normal baby at birth and had a happy childhood. By the time he was a teenager, his body had completely stopped metabolizing fat, leading to drastic weight loss. Today, he's six foot three and weighs only 133 pounds. But that doesn't stop Tom. I'm the sort of person who, if I do something, I like to do it well. He's already won several cycling titles at home. Now he wants to go further and compete in the Paralympics. For a number of years now, racing internationally as a professional athlete for Great Britain has been my goal. Tom's biggest supporter is his 23-year-old girlfriend, Alice, who lives with him in South London. I do the cooking in the house, and she does the laundry. 
I met Alice on an internet cycling forum, so it was, it was actually an internet romance. When I first met Tom, it was kind of a bit odd to see him for the first time in real life. He was actually a lot taller than I'd expected, but obviously I met him and he was really friendly and it was lovely. Beautiful. Look at that. Amazing. I'm very, very fortunate to have Alice. I think that's all I can say, really. The relationship comes easy, but it hasn't always been that way. When I first knew him, I did feel a bit self-conscious and quite aware of other people's reactions to him, but now I don't even notice it, really. Everyone's quite different, so I don't think Tom's really out of the ordinary at all. But unlike most people, Tom struggles with physical pain every single day. I would say the hardest part of my day is probably the first sort of hour or two after I've woken up. My muscles are very tight and it takes a while for me to sort of get moving and get the blood going. There are other serious complications. Because I don't store fat, it remains in the bloodstream. So because of this, I have type 2 diabetes. So much for indulging in whatever food he likes. In fact, Tom has to be extra careful about his diet. It's particularly important for me to, to measure out my food because I don't have the, the margin for error that normal people might have. A careful and intense exercise regime keeps Tom relatively healthy, but he'll never achieve the same fitness level as your average competitive athlete. Nevertheless, Tom is determined to reach his goal. Paralympic gold medals in Rio are very much the, the focus, but there's lots of little steps before we get there. Because Tom's medical condition is undiagnosed, the sport's governing body doesn't know how to classify him for competition. I have always had the misfortune of being placed in a category that is not as accurate as it could be. This is due to the fact that my condition is very rare. So rare and so puzzling, the genetic cause of his condition unknown until now. Dr. Richard Oram and his team at the University of Exeter finally have a breakthrough. There's a new technology called next generation sequencing, which allows scientists to screen the whole genome. This is 30,000 genes, and it's equivalent to looking for a single spelling mistake amongst a library full of 30,000 books. Sure enough, Dr. Oram's team cracks the code, uncovering the exact genetic mutation responsible for Tom's condition. Finally, Tom has a diagnosis, mandibular dysplasia with deafness and progeroid features, or MDP syndrome. It's an extremely rare condition, with less than 10 people throughout the world known to be affected. It will take more time and research before a definitive treatment can be found for Tom's condition, but the diagnosis itself is a good start. We've got other people who have the same condition, which means that it's extremely good because most of them are older than me to see what might be around the corner. The breakthrough diagnosis could also have a beneficial effect on Tom's Olympic ambitions. We now have a great deal more medical evidence that I can take to the UCI. And the UCI are the governing body of world cycling. And with this behind you, you might be classifying me, which of course will then go on to being that I get to compete internationally. Tom's life expectancy and future health status are unknown. But for the time being, he has no intention of slowing down. The key thing is not to get your hopes up but at the same time, not to be negative about what the future may hold, because you never know what's around the corner. Coming up, a modern-day elephant man fights the odds every day. And later, Trini faces off against her tumor in a high-tech operation. In 
the suburbs of Buenos Aires, there's a young man whose reputation precedes him. 24-year-old Christian Fritz has Proteus syndrome, which causes parts of his skin, bone, and flesh to grow large and misshapen, and covers him in body-wide tumors. The same affliction, it's believed, that led Joseph Merrick to be known as the Elephant Man. There's still no cure for the condition, and Christian has endured great suffering because of it. When I was a boy, the people literally stared at my feet for a whole block without breaking their gaze. Or they said things to me like freak of nature, Quasimodo, or hunchback. From the moment I gave birth, one of the doctors said that there was something wrong. Her baby wasn't growing normally, and over the years, it just got worse and worse. The only thing I wanted was for Christian to leave. Today, Christian's mother helps him get around, but it's a daily struggle. His heavy limbs and massive tumors put a heavy burden on his hips and knees. I can only walk about 50 feet without assistance. Dr. Eduardo Stefano of Buenos Aires Children's Hospital has followed Christian's case since birth. One of Christian's problems is that he has a normal heart, but in a body three times the size. Therefore, there is an increased pressure on his heart, his kidneys, and his organs. And this can cause a risk of early death. Incredibly, none of this has stopped Christian from living an active life. He works for the charity Caritas, helping victims of poverty. I really like working at Caritas because it makes me happy. Proteus syndrome in me is like a passion because it has never hindered me or forced me to give up. After work, when most people would be heading home, Christian heads to his second job as the host of a local radio show. I feel like I'm in another world once the light switches on and you're on air. It's like you inform people about the truth that doesn't usually get to them. Christian uses this as a platform to promote a positive and healthy attitude to life. I came on air to make Proteus Syndrome known, to make my life known, to know that you can do anything. Even though he has reduced mobility, the desire to keep doing things is there. Despite his inspiring resilience, there is a dark cloud looming for Christian, his annual medical checkup. Christian is scared to see the doctor after last year's visit took an unexpected and terrifying turn. Last year, my mother and doctor Stefano saw that I was pale, and it wasn't normal. Doctors found that Christian's red blood cells were extremely low. They did a blood transfusion, which caused heart and kidney failure. Christian almost died. It was the first time in my life I was scared. Yeah. A stint on the dialysis machine helped him recover, but it was a very close call. Last year, he was really bad, but he kept coming through. A year later, Christian is back at the hospital for his checkup. After his experience last time, he's extremely nervous as to what the doctor will find. We have to check that he is not too easily fatigued, which would be a potential sign that his heart is beginning to fail. 
First, Dr. Stefano wants to take a sample of Christian's blood, which will be sent off to a cardiologist to make sure his heart is functioning properly. Christian never got used to needles. Some of his tumors are quite large, but surgical removal risks fatal blood loss. So for now, Dr. Stefano just monitors the tumor's growth. Bueno, Christian, quedamos en eso, vemos los resultados. Dale. Today's checkup ends without any cause for alarm, and Christian couldn't be happier. Christian Fritz is a very special human being. He has never been angry about his physical condition. Christian refuses to let his illness stand in his way and always makes the most out of life. The truth is, you only have one life, and it's too short to waste it by feeling bad. I believe there isn't a greater happiness than acceptance of oneself. Oh. Still to come, Trini battles to survive a death-defying surgery. And the incredible upside-down man goes to the hospital the thought of surgery scares me. Trini Amirwe from Uganda is slowly being killed by a bone tumor. The only hope now rests with a team of highly specialized surgeons in London. There are a number of things that can go wrong, and death is one of the complications. The day of the surgery has arrived. As Trini and her mom head to the hospital, doctors are already prepping. The problem here is related to, uh, at the surgery, significant blood loss, and that's why we want to shorten that surgical time as much as possible. Precise coordination is key. So Trini's care involves an enormous number of people. We've got anaesthetists, surgeons, theatre staff, computer planners, paediatricians, and they're all giving their time for free. Excising a 4.4-pound tumor is delicate and painstaking work. What we hope is that by lifting the tissues off the bone, we'll be able to preserve all the nerves that move the muscles, and hopefully the movement will come back into the face. Hours and hours pass. First the tumor removal, then the careful reconstruction of a little girl's face. After 15 hours, the team is finally wrapping up. Trini's made it through surgery, but will it be a success? After surgery, I don't know how she'll look like. I don't really know. Monte Santo is a small city in northeast Brazil. Home to Claudio Vieira de Oliveira, a 37-year-old with a curious condition. No one has ever been able to explain the reason I was born with this disability. His legs are badly deformed, his arms of little use. And strangest of all, his spinal column is so severely twisted that his head rests facing backwards. When I was born, the doctor said I wouldn't live longer than 24 hours. The doctor was wrong. Claudio survived, happily and pain-free. His parents, having lost faith in doctors' opinions, never brought him back to the hospital. I have never contemplated giving up. 
Maybe this strength comes from my family and friends' support. In spite of his physical limitations, Claudio can fend for himself. Here in this house, Claudio was raised just like a normal child. Normal, just with a slightly different perspective. I don't see things upside down. To me, the world is backwards. As a youngster, Claudio was determined to get an education. When he was about eight, he asked to go to school. The hard work paid off. Today, Claudio is an accountant. I am someone who managed to adapt to my body. I don't see myself as being different from a normal person. Sure, he has challenges, but he's found easy ways to adapt. And Claudio is rarely lacking for company. It's impressive how, with this rare disability, he has been able to face the challenge of life and work. Lately, he has had pain in his legs from shuffling across the hard floor. So, he's had special shoes made. We're very thankful because this way he doesn't get hurt. When I got shoes, my life became much easier. I can stand anywhere and move around normally on my knees. Which makes an afternoon outing even more comfortable. <laughs> People here don't see me as Claudio the disabled. They see me as normal. My biggest pride is that he isn't self-conscious. <laughs> 184 miles away in Salvador, Dr. Angelina Acosta, a medical geneticist, has become fascinated by Claudio's case and wants to examine him in person. It's really rare to, to see a patient with all these limitations survive. Claudio agrees to see the doctor, but the implications are daunting. The thought of surgery scares me because I don't know what the result will be. If I had surgery, would I be the same Claudio? Or would I be worse? Still to come, Claudio's first ever doctor's visit. And a set of triplets who faced more challenges than most people see in a lifetime. Bobby Joe Tarot was born with a rare genetic disorder, Cruzon syndrome, which causes a baby's skull to seal shut before the brain's done growing. Patients have strangely shaped heads, protruding eyes, and if left untreated, potential brain damage or death. Bobby Joe underwent surgery to unlock her skull when she was eight months old and went on to live a normal life. She fell in love, got married, and had four kids, including triplets. When I first found out I was pregnant, I was very happy or very excited. But all Bobby Joe's children have Cruzon syndrome too. As far as testing for cruzons, they don't have any testing for cruzons. The worst case was the last-born triplet, Cadence, whose skull had already locked before her brain had started to grow. Mm -hmm. 
when I saw her, then I was overwhelmed. I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what their next step was for her. Neurosurgeon Dr. Ronald Young knew that Cadence would need multiple major surgeries to prevent brain damage or even death. I had to do a procedure opening up her skull at the sutures so it could grow. And then we were going to come back and try to reshape her so she would have a more normal appearance. Over the course of five months, several operations took place to unlock baby Cadence's skull and allow her brain room to grow. All right, thank you. The top three things I was worried about were bleeding, bleeding, and bleeding. Because this is a very small child and working over a very large blood vessel, if that is open during the case, then it's an all-out emergency. But miraculously, Cadence pulled through several complex surgeries. If it wasn't for the level of uh, expertise that they have and professionalism that they do have, there's no way she would have survived any of that. I love those doctors. They, they've done a lot for my family. later, and it's hard to believe how far this little girl has come. Cadence, she's had multiple plastic surgery done to get her head shaped to look normal. Like Taylor stuff. Look, look Over the years, Cadence's older brother, Jaden, and siblings, Taylor and Kaylin, have also had surgery to counter the effects of Cruzon syndrome. And recently, Taylor was rushed to the hospital, suffering from excruciating head pain. Taylor's was kind of an unexpected surgery this summer. We weren't expecting his head to grow upwards. Uh, that was something that just took us all by surprise. Yet again, doctors were successfully able to reshape Taylor's head. But there will always be challenges. <laughs> Pediatric plastic surgeon, Dr. Jason Bloxham, sees the triplets regularly. Right. Look, at that way. Look at the light switch. Look. I see all of them at least every six months to examine. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm concerned about their overall development, but also protecting their eyes. Everything looks good today. And despite the perils of Cruzon syndrome, there is reason to be grateful. Some pads to help my back go away. Certainly there is an advantage to working on younger children, especially with their bone heals so much better and you don't have problems with later developing bone gaps. If they didn't get the surgeries early in life, it would cause them to have major issues um, or even death. Outside of the hospital, the triplets are developing their own little personalities, just like any other four-year-olds. Ah. Ah. No, Kaylin, she is the boss of the bunch. Abba. No, that's my book. Cadence, she's more outgoing, happy. And Taylor, she just kind of is laid back, you know? Cadence, Kaylin, and Taylor will need minor surgeries throughout their childhood, but the prognosis is looking good for all three. Their major, major surgeries are in the past, and now it's just looking forward, seeing what their future brings for them, and understand what you know life is all about. Up next, Claudio goes back to the hospital for the first time since he was born. And Trini gets used to life with her brand new face.
When Claudio Vieira de Oliveira was born, the doctors told his parents he wouldn't survive. Now, 37 years later, he's making his first return visit to a hospital. Geneticist Dr. Angelina Acosta is amazed that Claudio has survived this long without ever getting medical treatment. She's eager to know what caused his deformities and sends him for x-rays. With these x-rays, it was possible to affirm that it's not a bone disease. It was really important to, to have this information. Next, a physical exam. Claudio is surprisingly healthy, and as for any medical intervention, Dr. Acosta believes it wouldn't be worth it. To do any kind of uh, treatment in Claudio is really so complicated, uh, can cause more problems in his condition because now he's really so adapted up with his condition. If he had the possibility when he was born to have any kind of treatment, he could now have a better life. So why was Claudio born with this disability? And what are the implications for his future? We can say that he has uh, arthrogryposis uh, multiplex congenita. Arthrogryposis significa dizer contraturas fixas de múltiplas articulações. Então é exatamente essas, os braços que não consegue estender, as pernas que não consegue estender, múltipla, múltiplos, múltiplas articulações e congênita que já aparece ao nascimento. Dr. Acosta hopes that this medical examination is just the beginning of an ongoing consultation she will have with Claudio to discover why he was born this way. It can be a neurological problem, it can be a muscle problem. So it's really necessary to continue the investigation to try to confirm the diagnosis because it can be genetic and he, ha he can have a child. Whatever the future holds for Claudio's health, at the present moment, he will continue making the most of his life. He has recently become a motivational speaker. Bom dia a todos. Tá fraco esse bom dia, gente. Bom dia, vai forte. Bom dia. Claudio's positivity and courage in the face of life's adversities makes him unnatural. Então nós estamos aqui de passagem. De passagem, então a gente tem que aproveitar as nossas vidas. A gente tá vendo aí as, a, 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 as guerras, as drogas, então não sabendo nós homens que nós podemos mudar, né? I feel like I'm fulfilling my mission in life. Cumprindo uma, uma grande missão na vida. Olhar para para o próximo, né? Dar um bom dia, bom dia, minha querida, minha querida. Se quiser dar um abraço, pode dar um abraço para para vocês, entendeu? At the moment, a lot of my wishes are coming true. One of them is to be able to show the world who Claudio is. So I'm fulfilling that wish by telling my story, and that makes me very happy. It's my life and no problem, because I'm happy. It's been several weeks since a massive bone tumor was removed from Trini's face, and she's healing nicely. This service will be fast to Brighton only. Yes! She's never seen the ocean before, so facing the world, has arranged a trip to Brighton on England's southern coast. Trini can now breathe freely, and her eyesight will be fine as soon as she's fully healed. 
when I look at her now, I feel very happy. I'm really thankful to the doctors for the great work that I did. Finally free from the monstrous tumor that almost killed her, she can now return to being a happy eight-year-old. After my operation, it feels good. We see lots of patients every year facing the world, but Trini is really one of those ones that's really quite special. She's basically come in, um, knocked us all sideways, really hope that her surgery gives her the opportunity to go on and read a sort of rich and fulfilling life. I now have the hope that she'll have the future. Four months later, Trini and her mom are back in Uganda and filled with gratitude. Now she can eat. During the day, she's fine. She's totally fine. She can breathe well. She can run up and down. She does everything as a normal child. Before her operation, Trini's condition kept her out of school. The teachers in the school were, really, were worried, like, because Trini could attract uh, children's attention. They could just keep on looking at Trini. But now, Trini is back where she belongs, making up for lost time. Nostril. 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 Now she has a new school. Now she has good friends. Now she's doing really well. And she has big ambitions for the future. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. Fibrous dysplasia is a condition that persists until patients reach their 20s. Trini's bone tumor may grow back, but doctors from the Facing the World charity have committed to any future treatment. Never again will Trini have to face the fear of her own face.